I'm here at the European Atlanta Conference 2023, and I'm here with Vittorio. Everyone knows in the industry, <laughs> talking about his perspectives on the future of identity. Welcome, Vittorio. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, I want to ask you about what comes to your mind first when you think about a future of identity? What is the most important thing? Well, it, to me, that's a, a difficult question to answer because uh, we use identity as an umbrella term, but in reality, we know identity is so many different things. And uh, we also have like these uh, recency bias in which uh, when you hear something being spoken about, you tend to like uh, over overestimate the size of this thing. And the classic thing that we hear about uh, uh, in recent times is like, for example, the Fabio Conantras, which is a wonderful new technology, which uh, is used for doing new use cases. And instead, like a lot of people think that there will be a replacement in which, uh, for example, instead of doing a federation like we did today, we'll use uh, verifiable credentials. And that might actually not work all that well because uh, the verifiable credentials give more control to the user. And instead, in the case of federation, you want to be administrator. But, but, but is this really true that it means verifiable credentials, digitalized and then it replaces? identical virus, for instance, replaces federation. I doubt it. Honestly, I think it's a bit more about the first and the last mile, so to speak. So yes, for sure, we can go uh, with our wallet and look to the answer that it could back in the application if it supports this address that has. But in many, many cases, it will be, we go to whichever access management system, the IDP we have in place, and that IDP trust can make a better authentication decision. Because so the other tools with so much information, there's so much more to make make a good decision, a qualified decision, and then it connects us to the back end to the target application. But I think this is something where where I believe a lot of people that I talk about this in some of the other talks as well, a lot of people have the, the fear maybe decentralized identities are disruptive, that they change everything we do. I think they just open new doors, give us new opportunities to do also a lot of things we currently are doing way, way better than we ever could do with the traditional means. A lot of the things that we do today, they work. And uh, exactly like you say, there are things uh, that uh, are just better made uh, as a decision on the server side. That's all like you have a business rules to run, uh, you have like uh, authorization. Uh, so in general, the scenarios that work well today, we likely keep working the way they do. There are things that today are very difficult to do. Like for example, if we would have uh, truly, uh, say like a uh, real participation in online life at the same level that we have uh, in uh, offline life, then uh, if we use a traditional approach in which every single transaction, we have to go back to an endpoint and ask it to mint the token, it just would be so incredibly inefficient and for uh, not a lot of return in many cases because uh, there might be not a lot of uh, uh, code to be run uh, in that one, just like uh, asserting a couple of, uh, uh, of attributes. And so for those cases which don't exist, yet, like today we don't yet participate in online life in the same way in which we do offline yeah. life, but the, the uh, diffusion of uh, the recovery credentials will unlock those use cases. But Again, I completely agree that uh, I don't think we'll see a replacement. It's more of a matter like uh, we'll be empowered to do more than we do today. Yeah. I, I, for us, I also believe that a lot of things we do with good old IGA, so user provision, user life cycles, much better by utilizing the information we have in verifiable grant decentralized identities. Just think about an onboarding process. So if you have a proof in your wallet that says this is Martin Kupinger, and we have the proof based on this EID card, then you can, can do a, a way more efficient onboarding process. I, the join of process in IGA can become better. It's not, not disruptive from the, that sense. I think it's disruptive from the, the way we need to think about a lot of things. When we, we can make it work with Steam, as I guess there are then a lot of new opportunities we can leverage. I remember probably some 12 or 13 or 14 years ago in EIC, we started talking about a concept called life management web, uh, which was really about um, 
giving them control and then using it in, for instance, uh, providing some information to, to someone, to some app that searches for us the, the most affordable load or something like that. That would be a use case which we can't do with traditional meat. But you also can do a lot of things that are traditional better than before. I am a strong believer in uh, um, the bits, as in actually putting things in the hands of people. And here we are all experts and we like to think about the future and we can speculate and we can try to do the absolute best job that we can do by doing open standards and uh, trying to predict all the various things that might go wrong. But in the end, no plan survives. So I think that uh, we do our best and then uh, we need a V1. We need a V1 in which uh, a large number of people actually use this V. Because today, every time you ask everybody who's enthusiasts, uh, they'll point to some use cases and they appointed some uh, uh, prototypes and pilots, but in the end, until you don't have the masses to adopt we this. Need this yeah. And it, no doubt. we want to learn what works and what doesn't. We want to understand what are the ways in which this thing can be abused. So at some point, we need to stop negotiating what we want to put on the wire, and we need to put stuff in the hands of people and be willing yep. to have a V1 that we have to deal with as a legacy as we get to V2 in which we will have learned actually how this thing works in practice. Yeah. So I think that there is a lot of work in front of us, practical work. And um, making it available everywhere. The wallet must be something which is just there, into all the top world which you may use. I think this is very sexual. Sorry, you know, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me and share your thoughts on this interesting subject. I'll try the rest of the conference. Thank you for having me. and uh, it's. As usual, EIC is fantastic. Thank you.